So they've now they've got the uh what should we call it up? Oh, I've gotta get this guy. That's an enemy too! Yeah, I got him. Wake up Neo's down, and then this enemy I need to change to take out. Where'd he go? There we go. Excellent. We're just we're just schwacking fools. <laughs> I know you. So it's finally here. The Farm 51 has dropped the huge World War 3 0.6 patch after weeks of teasing. It was touted as the Giga Patch, and it probably deserves that title. The patch contains a ton of new stuff and a lot of changes, so let's delve right into it. World War 3 is an early access, battlefield inspired, hardcore first person shooter with crazy amounts of customization and low time to kill mechanics. Players fight across European battlefields modeled after actual locations and use actual modern weapons and vehicles. Oh right, patch 0.6 is a major release patch that the Farm 51 has had in the works for 6 weeks and is a direct response to player feedback concerning the state of the game after the disastrous December 0.3 patch. Soldiers fighting on World War III simulated battlefields wanted the developer to focus on getting the core mechanics of the game back to the buttery smooth, satisfying experience they had fallen in love with in the beginning, instead of adding new content which could only further de-optimize the game. So of course, the Farm 51 decided to do both. The list of changes and additions in 0.6 is truly impressive. Let's briefly step through the content additions first. The biggest additions are Smolensk and Polyarni, two new battlefields to fight across in Warzone, World War III's Capture the Point game type similar to Battlefield's Conquest mode. Well, sort of new. We've seen Smolensk before, but it was pre texture and with limited vegetation, so basically it was a sniper's dream. They pulled it for a while to get those things finished, and now it's back in the game. Smolensk is the most open countryside style map currently in the game and offers long engagement distances and less claustrophobic gameplay than the previous city maps. Polyarni is entirely new and is, in my opinion, the best map yet. It features a town in the old Soviet style with block apartments, an officer's club, war museum, and amazingly open yet cover-filled approaches to its six capture points. This is a brief highlight, but if you want a more in-depth look at these maps, please check in the description box below for my good friend Tact Gamer's amazing new map overview. Also in the Giga Patch is two new rifles, the American M4 WMS and the British SA-80. These new weapons fill some nice niches that players have been wanting, with the SA-80 as a sort of little brother to the SCAR-H for long-range engagements, and the M4 as the finally dominant close-to-mid-range 5.56 rifle that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the big 7.62 types. There are four new vehicles in the game as well, including two new infantry fighting vehicles, the attack helicopter drone, and the MRAP. I admit I haven't seen the IFVs yet, but the helicopter drone and the MRAP changed the game in great ways. The helicopter is the first truly airborne threat that can dump loads of fire on unsuspecting players, but is, honestly, pretty fragile and easily destroyed. I can tell you the design is on point, because I've been trashed by this thing in the hands of other players, but my noob piloting skills have scored very few kills with it. Woo! I hit him! The MRAP is a heavily, and I mean heavily armored mobile spawn point that allows your side soldiers to really dominate a section of the map if the opponents don't find and destroy it. This along with some of the new spawning mechanics I'll speak about later is actually one of my favorite changes with 0.6 because it helps to create a much more dynamic battle where you could never quite know where your enemies can come from. Uh, unless they park it right in the middle of C2 of course. There have also been a lot of old mechanics that have been revamped based upon player feedback. One of the biggest changes comes in the form of the spotting system. Gone are the days where you could just spam X in the fog to find your enemies. Now pressing X will simply add a red square for your allies right where you're looking to draw attention to something. You can hold down X to change what kind of marker you put down, or double press X if you're looking directly at an enemy vehicle or soldier to highlight them in the old way. But unlike before, the enemy's marker only stays visible for a short time and you can no longer track enemies through walls and other concealment. The double press mechanic isn't quite perfected yet, and sometimes errs on the side of not marking an enemy you can clearly see, but I have no doubt that they will refine it in future patches. There are now a lot more options beyond text chat as well. The Farm 51 added a pretty nice radio comms menu for quick messages, and they have even implemented the first go at a voice chat system, though it's gotten mixed reviews so far. Like I alluded to before, the spawn system has also been tweaked. While squad members can still spawn on their squad leader, Squad leaders can now also spawn on any member of their squad that is still alive. 
What this means is that squads can now more easily maintain their cohesion even after a squad leader dies, because of the leapfrog effect of a squad leader dying, spawning on teammates, and then them continuing to spawn on the squad leader. Mixed with the MRAP, this makes big pushes feel much larger and much more difficult to defeat, because they don't just peter out after a few kills like they did pre-patch. Another big change, though you can argue this is a sort of addition, is the new neutral vehicle spawns. Now, when certain points are captured and held, IFVs and tanks will spawn there, giving a big reward to the team in control. In my experience, this effectively doubles the amount of vehicles driving around. It means that RPG secondary with tandem ammo is only more useful now. One change that hasn't gotten much fanfare, but I really appreciate, is the customization system getting a massive addition of new paints, camos, and materials, as well as the ability to paint individual components, such as the sights or laser emitters. This allows the player to make some pretty sweet looking weapons. And what's the point of running around shooting big guns if you can't look cool doing it? Optimization and bug fixes were the core focus of this patch, and it really shows. As someone who's played this game very actively since November, I can honestly say the game has never run this smooth. Gone are the phantom bullets, gone are the frame rate drops, gone are the stuttery moments, gone finally are the random drops to the underworld. I will forever hate Berlin B2. In ways big and small, the Farm 51, along with some frankly committed bug testers, has dutifully squashed bugs, improved quality of life, and made everything just look better. They have added in some great new options, including a CPU boost setting, which has helped many a low speed computer finally run this game, as well as some quality presets. And they have finally let us turn the fog off. I will say that again. Turn the fog off. There's a ton of technical info around the optimizations they made during the eight patches of the PTE phase, and most of it goes over my head. So if you're interested in the nuts and bolts, there's a link to the PTE forums in the description where you can get that info. Well, yes. Another focus of this patch was getting closer to a better balance in the game's weapons based upon usage statistics the Farm 51 gathered as well as player feedback. Looking at the change logs, I'm not sure there was a single rifle, ammo type, or vehicle that didn't go under the knife in some way. So expect your favorite OP weapons to, well, not be so OP anymore. A special note is that some weapons got quite a bit heavier, so be prepared to have to adapt your loadouts a bit. Well. If you couldn't tell by the tone of this video, I am very impressed by the Giga Patch. I had played the PTE and seen how good each of these changes and optimizations were, but it wasn't until my first game on Berlin the day the patch dropped on the live servers that I realized that this is it. This is the patch we've been waiting for. The shooting once again feels great. The new maps, vehicles, and weapons add interesting complexity, and the optimizations have brought us back to the days of buttery smooth gameplay. And with the additions of the new spawning mechanics, spawning system, and comms menu, the flow of the game is seriously improved, and I feel like World War 3 is only just starting to feel like the tactical team-based game that the Farm 51 really wants it to be. So, if you've been sitting on the fence about buying World War 3, or you bought it during the initial EA launch and haven't touched it since, now is the time to get in and get your boots dirty. And if you're looking for an inclusive, tight-knit group of warriors to storm the battlefields with, might I suggest you join the FOD Squad, the baddest fighting outfit in space? We train in hardcore, realistic, tactical first-person shooters like World War III, Insurgency Sandstorm, Ground Branch, and soon to be Squad and Arma. So if that sounds like you, you can join us at discord.uselessfodder.com and prepare your loadout. Because I gotta tell you, World War III is calling. That's not good. Yep, <laughs> not good at all. <laughs>